Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about inflammatory bowel diseases, mainly the Crohn's disease. Now the inflammatory bowel disease, they are the chronic condition which results from inappropriate mucosal immune activation in the gastrointestinal tract. And the two disorders which comprise the IBD, they are the Crohn's disease and the ulcerative colitis. Both the Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, they are common in females and occur in around teens or early 20s of age. Going to the pathogenesis of both the diseases. Now, the, both the diseases, pathogenesis involves the intestinal microbiota, the intestinal epithelium and the mucosal immune cells. Now, the altered microbiota of the intestine it is presented to the dendritic cell which is the antigen presenting cell now this antigen presenting cell presents this antigen to the t cell this occurs all of this is occurring in a genetically predisposed person now the t cell it further differentiates into th1 cell th2 cell and th17 cell the Th1 and Th17, they are mainly involved in the Crohn's disease and Th2 is involved in the ulcerative colitis. Now, Th17 uh, cell, it uh, secretes interleukin-17 which recruits mainly neutrophils which will lead to many enzymes production, the free radicals, they will injure the epithelium. Also, Th1, it secretes interferon gamma, which leads to macrophages activation. It secretes tumor necrosis factor, which will injure further the epithelium. Now, the epithelium is uh, being injured, which will lead to increase of the bacterial influx into the lamina propria. In now, increased bacterial influx will further increase the antigen presentation, the T cell activation, and the cytokine production so this occurs as a vicious cycle this is a self amplifying cycle which will lead to destruction of the epithelium and resultant ulceration of the uh, lining epithelium so the pathogenesis it mainly involves the intestinal microbiota secondly the intestinal epithelial dysfunction which can be in the form of increase in the gap junctions and aberrant immune responses and the genetical predisposition of the person. Going to the Crohn's disease and the morphology involved in the Crohn's disease. Now, the morphology grossly uh, in Crohn's disease, we know that the Crohn's disease can involve any area of the GI tract, uh, starting from the oral cavity to the anal region it can involve any part of the GA tract and but the most common sites to be involved at presentation are the ileum the terminal ileum the ileocecal valve and the cecum now there is a very characteristic finding of the Crohn's disease which is known as the skip lesion now what are the skip lesion skip lesion refers to that the some area of the intestine is involved followed by a uninvolved area and then another part of the intestine is involved we can see this is a very characteristic finding of this crohn's disease we will not discuss ulcerative colitis morphology in this video i will discuss that in the next video this is the skip lesions they are characteristic of crohn's disease also crohn's disease leads to inflammation of all the layers of the intestine this starting from the mucosa to the serosa therefore it is also known as transmural inflammation the transmural uh, leads to deep ulcerations and fissure formation because the inflammation is along the wall of the intestine it is more prone to the perforation to the strictures other morphological features are we know that uh, there is ulceration now there is a very characteristic appearance known as cobblestone appearance which is seen in the crohn's disease now what is cobblestone appearance it is a coarsely textured appearance of the intestine in which the diseased tissue the diseased area is depressed below the normal mucosa this coarsely textured appearance of the intestine in the crohn's disease is known as the cobblestone appearance 
Also, the intestinal wall is thickened and rubbery because of the transmural edema which is taking place, the inflammation which is going on and reparative fibrosis is also taking place. There is hypertrophy of the muscularis propria. This all lead to thickening of the intestinal wall and also because of repair which is going on and ulceration there is stricture formation which takes place in the Crohn's disease. We can see in this picture this is the cobblestone appearance in which the we can find that there is a depressed part this is a coarsely textured part this is cobblestone appearance and we can see these are the ulcers here the uh, lining epithelium is missing. This is the ulcer. This is known as the serpentine ulcer which is found in the Crohn's disease. Now going to the microscopic features of the Crohn's disease. The microscopic feature which is characteristic of the active Crohn's disease is presence of abundant neutrophils. We understood in the pathogenesis due to activation of interleukin 17 the neutrophils they are recruited. Now these neutrophils they enter and damage the crypts and also they damage the crypts and they enter into the crypts they enter into the crypts and when they are present inside the crypts like these these are the neutrophils which are present inside the crypt this is known as the crypt abscess and they are mostly present and diagnostic of the Crohn's disease we will see in this picture we can see these are the crypts these are the crypts and inside the crypts these cells these are the neutrophils. This is known as the crypt abscess. Also very characteristic of the Crohn's disease is presence of the granuloma. There is presence of non-caseating granuloma which is very characteristic of Crohn's disease. Now going to other features. The, we know that ulceration is common and there is abrupt transition between the ulcerated part of the Crohn's disease and the adjacent normal mucosa. Because of repeated cycles of crypt destruction, ulceration, regeneration, it leads to distortion of the normal mucosal architecture. Because of which normally the crypts in the intestine, they are straight and they are parallel to each other. But because of this repeated cycle of destruction and regeneration, it takes bizarre shapes and orientation toward one and other. So in this picture we can see this is the ulceration, the abrupt transition between the ulceration. We can see here till here the lining epithelium of the intestine is present and here we can find there is a ulceration. This is the ulceration, type of ulceration which is seen. Also very characteristic of the Crohn's disease is the presence of non-caseating granuloma. It is not present in almost all cases but is very characteristic of the Crohn's disease. Okay. Now other features, these were the microscopic features. Going to the clinical features, clinical features mostly uh, the patients, they have intermittent attacks of the Crohn disease. They have a period of active disease and a period of inactive disease. And in active disease, they can have diarrhea, fever, abdominal pain. They can have severe symptoms like fever, bloody diarrhea, which can even mimic the pain, can even mimic the acute appendicitis or bowel perforation uh, also. Also, other findings, they are that... Um, iron deficiency anemia, hypoalbuminemia because of decreased absorptive capacity of the intestine such features can also be seen. Other findings the disease uh, we already understood that disease is sometime active and sometime it is asymptomatic but the disease reactivation can occur due to various things also. It can be due to stress, it can be due to eating of specific dietary items, it can be due to cigarette smoking also. Cigarette smoking uh, causes uh, activation in the case of Crohn's disease but is protective in case of ulcerative colitis. Other extra intestinal manifestations can also be seen in such patients like uveitis, polyarthritis, sacroilitis. They can also be seen. Risk of adenocarcinoma is also present with Crohn's disease. However, it is more in the case of ulcerative colitis. We will discuss the differences in the next video. This was all about the Crohn's disease. Do like, share and subscribe. Thank you.